October 9, 2024, News Report 1. The New York Times reports that renowned American journalist Bob Woodward reveals in his new book, War, that former President Trump secretly gifted a rapid Abbott COVID-19 testing device for personal use to Russian President Vladimir Putin during the Wuhan pneumonia pandemic. At the time, this device was in high demand due to the outbreak of the pandemic. Woodward, one of the world's most influential investigative journalists, previously uncovered the Watergate scandal, which led to President Nixon's resignation. The book mentions that Putin was very concerned about contracting COVID-19 and requested Trump not to disclose the matter, fearing it would impact Trump's political future. Woodward also disclosed that Trump secretly spoke with Putin seven times after leaving office. Additionally, Trump pressured the Republican Party to block Congress from passing aid to Ukraine. In response to these allegations, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov stated on October 9 that Russia did receive the testing device but denied that Putin and Trump had multiple phone calls after Trump left office. Meanwhile, U.S. Vice President Harris stated on October 8 that during the pandemic, Americans were desperately trying to buy testing reagents, while Trump, as president, gifted these reagents to a murderous dictator for personal use. Harris emphasized that Trump is unfit to serve as president again, calling him a leader manipulated by authoritarian figures. News Report 2 The Office of the Director of National Intelligence warned on October 7 that China and Russia are interfering in U.S. elections through misinformation, especially in this year's congressional elections. Intelligence officials noted that this misinformation primarily includes misleading content about candidates, issues, and election procedures, aimed at misleading voters, suppressing turnout, and exacerbating distrust and division within the United States. China is currently focusing on candidates in several local districts, supporting or opposing them based on their stance towards China. Russia's goal is to weaken candidates who support Ukraine. At the same time, Reuters reported that the U.S. Department of Justice filed charges on October 8 against an Afghan man, Tassadai, accusing him of conspiring to launch a terrorist attack on Election Day. The indictment stated that Tassadai had searched online for camera locations at the White House and Washington Monument, as well as which states do not require a gun permit. After his arrest, he admitted that large gatherings were his target for the attack and planned to sacrifice himself in the attack to become a martyr. Tassadai, 27, entered the United States in 2021 through a special immigrant visa designed for those who served the U.S. military during the withdrawal from Afghanistan, and he currently resides in Oklahoma. News Report 3 Radio France Internationale reports that the member countries of the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, Quad, the United States, Japan, Australia, and India, conducted joint military exercises in the Indian Ocean starting on October 8. Codenamed Malabar, the exercises will continue until October 18 and take place in the southern seas of India. Japan has deployed a destroyer, while the U.S. sent a destroyer, and special forces from all four countries will participate in the exercises. The drills will include anti-submarine warfare, surface warfare, and aerial combat, aimed at enhancing military interoperability within the Quad framework to counter China's expansion in the Indo-Pacific region. In September of this year, Quad member states held a summit in the United States and issued a joint statement expressing serious concerns about China's increasingly aggressive actions at sea. The statement also emphasized that the four countries would further strengthen their cooperation. The Malabar exercises are an annual routine event for the Quad, initiated in 1992 with initial participation only from India and the US Australia withdrew from the exercises in 2008 due to China's protests but rejoined in 2015 when Japan participated. Since then, all Quad member countries have fully engaged in the exercises. India initially opposed the militarization of the Quad but is now actively participating, indicating a shift in the Quad's role. News Report 4 The Korea Herald reports that the General Staff of the Korean People's Army announced on October 9 that it would completely sever railway and road connections with South Korea starting today and plans to fortify border defense facilities. Reports indicate that on the same day, North Korean soldiers dismantled railway tracks connecting to South Korea. 
The general staff stated that it would permanently cut off and seal the border with South Korea to curb war and maintain national security as a self-defense measure. The statement emphasized that South Korea is North Korea's primary hostile country and main enemy, accusing South Korea of continuously threatening to end the North Korean regime. Additionally, the statement mentioned that the scale of South Korean military exercises is expanding, and U.S. nuclear strategic assets are frequently appearing on the Korean peninsula, prompting the North Korean military to take strong countermeasures to ensure national security. On the other hand, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un stated on October 7 during an inspection of the Kim Jong-un National Defense University that while North Korea previously emphasized liberating the South and unifying Korea by force, it is no longer interested in such pursuits. He clearly stated that North Korea has no intention of attacking South Korea and has completely ruled out such thoughts. Kim's remarks differ from the positions of previous North Korean leaders, who stressed the unification of the Korean peninsula, suggesting he may be attempting to ease tensions with South Korea. Some analysts believe Kim's statement signifies a focus on strengthening domestic affairs, potentially indicating new actions and measures within North Korea in the future. News Report 5 According to the Nikkei News, the Japanese House of Representatives officially announced its dissolution on October 8, marking the official start of the next House of Representatives election. The election is scheduled to announce on October 15, with voting and counting taking place on October 27, and the results being revealed on the same day. Candidates will compete for the 465 seats in the House of Representatives, including 289 single-member district seats and 176 proportional representation seats. The focus of public attention is whether the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, can maintain a majority in the House. The House of Representatives elections are held every four years, and the current House was originally set to serve until October next year. However, the new Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba quickly announced the dissolution of the House and called for an election after taking office on October 1. On October 9, Ishiba stated that the dissolution of the House was intended to allow the current government to win the public's trust through the election, and that the LDP would participate in the election with integrity. A quick opinion poll conducted by the Nikkei News on October 1st and 2nd showed that Ishiba's cabinet had a support rate of 51%, an increase of 24 percentage points from the last poll for former Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. Additionally, the support rate for the ruling LDP rose from 37% to 41%, an increase of 4 percentage points. This rise in support has given Ishiba confidence as he faces the upcoming election. News Report 6 on October 9, China's Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development announced that it had recently held a national meeting on ensuring the delivery of housing. The meeting emphasized the need to further promote the expansion and efficiency of the coordination mechanism for ensuring housing delivery, broaden the coverage of whitelist projects, meet the reasonable financing needs of real estate projects, and ensure the completion of annual delivery tasks. The timing of this national meeting indicates that the task of ensuring housing delivery faces significant challenges. Firstly, the biggest issue is the shortage of funds for construction. Due to strict government approvals, the number of projects on the whitelist is limited, leading to insufficient financing, making it difficult to guarantee subsequent construction payments, and causing many projects to struggle to proceed. Secondly, quality issues related to housing delivery are becoming increasingly prominent. Due to tight funds, many real estate companies can only build homes to the minimum standards, meaning they are deliverable but may not meet buyers' expectations. Many delivered homes are bare shells, significantly different from the model rooms or renderings that buyers initially saw, leading to quality issues such as leaks upon delivery. These quality issues have sparked dissatisfaction among some homeowners, with some refusing to accept their homes or only paying part of the final payment, further complicating the task of ensuring housing delivery. The slow progress has increased the risk of unfinished buildings, posing a significant hazard in the current real estate market. News Report 7 the latest poll released by the National Defense and Security Research Institute of Taiwan on October 9 shows that Taiwanese public opinions on cross-strait relations and national defense issues are quite complex. According to the poll, 
63.9% of respondents believe that China's territorial ambitions pose a serious threat to Taiwan. 67% of respondents believe that China might take military action against Taiwan within the next five years, but the likelihood of invasion is low. 67.8% of respondents expressed willingness to fight to defend Taiwan. 52.6% of respondents believe that the United States would send troops to assist Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion. 75% of respondents believe that the U.S. would provide airlift support of food or medical supplies to Taiwan. Regarding Taiwan's defense budget, 49.1% of respondents support increasing the budget, while 48.7% are willing to achieve this through tax increases. Additionally, 72% of respondents believe that strengthening relations with Japan would help enhance Taiwan's national security, and 62% believe that Taiwan-U.S. relations would also reinforce Taiwan's security. The survey also indicated that 38% of respondents worry that if Russia wins the war in Ukraine, China might emulate Russia's actions and invade Taiwan. This poll reflects the concerns of the Taiwanese public regarding the situation in the Taiwan Strait and their expectations for national defense and external assistance, particularly a high level of confidence in U.S. support. News Report 8 This year's double tenth National Day celebration in Taiwan has drawn considerable attention and controversy, particularly regarding the event's preparations led by legislative speaker Han Kuiyu, which are perceived as heavily personal. The main visual design of the celebration uses the colors of the Republic of China flag, red and blue, paired with plum blossom designs and includes the phrase, Happy Birthday, Republic of China, evoking sentiments from before 2016. This visual design is seen as an attempt to court Han supporters, especially given that the Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, has emphasized diversity and unity in previous National Day celebrations over the past eight years. Han Kuyu's arrangements for the celebration have been criticized, with some design professionals suggesting that the main visual design is conservative and anonymous, indicating that the designer may not wish to be publicly recognized. Furthermore, Han did not invite the Chinese Culture Association to assist in the planning, instead organizing the event entirely on his own, further emphasizing his personal touch. Zhang Juanhao a professor of political science at Donghai University, commented that Han's leadership of the Double Tenth Celebration aims to downplay Taiwan's national identity and reveals a pro-China stance, which may make foreign guests feel awkward. At the same time, President Lai ching Tee, in a speech during the Double Tenth Evening event on October 5, referred to the motherland, stating that the Republic of China is 113 years old implying that this history predates that of the People's Republic of China, which is 75 years. This statement was interpreted by the mainland's Taiwan Affairs Office as a Taiwan independence historical paradox, further igniting a war of words across the Taiwan Strait. In response, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Richard Kanda stated at a press conference on October 8 that the U.S. position on the Taiwan issue remains unchanged, continuing to adhere to the Taiwan Relations Act, three joint communiques, and six assurances. Kanda reiterated that the U.S. opposes any unilateral changes to the status quo and does not support Taiwan's independence, expressing hope for a peaceful resolution to cross-strait issues. These remarks indicate that cross-strait relations remain tense, and the style of the National Day celebration led by Han Kuiyu has further exacerbated divisions among different political factions in Taiwan. News Report 9 On October 8, Foxconn announced plans to build the world's largest NVIDIA chip factory in Mexico, specifically for the production of NVIDIA's newly released GB200 artificial intelligence chip. Foxconn chairman Liu Yangwei stated that the company will be the first in the world to ship the GB200 chip, with expectations of substantial production capacity. NVIDIA unveiled its most powerful AI chip, the GB200, at its developer conference in March this year. This chip uses next-generation processor architecture and TSMC's 4-nanometer process, designed specifically for high-end AI servers, and is hailed as a superchip. Unlike companies such as Intel, Micron, and Texas Instruments, NVIDIA does not own its chip manufacturing plants and relies on foundries for production. 
As a major supplier to Apple, Foxconn is also seeking opportunities to expand into the AI field and has established a partnership with NVIDIA, announcing a joint AI chip factory last year. Additionally, Foxconn has become a supplier for major companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, gradually expanding its influence in the global AI chip market. This development indicates that Foxconn is not just a key player in the consumer electronics sector but is also making strides into other important areas of the high-tech industrial chain. News Report 10 On October 9, the Eastern District Magistrates Court in Hong Kong sentenced Lu Guanqi, an invigilator for the Hong Kong Diploma of Secondary Education, DSE, to two weeks in prison and fined him 5,000 Hong Kong dollars for violating confidentiality regulations. Liu was accused of posting photos of answer sheets on Xia Hongshu after supervising the English subject of the DSE in April this year, attempting to prepare for future tutoring classes. Since 2012, Hong Kong's secondary education system has undergone reforms, eliminating the former Form 5 and Form 7 public examinations. Students now take the DSE in their sixth year of secondary school as their university entrance examination. During exams, teachers and assistants from the schools are typically hired as invigilators. In this case, Magistrate Su Wenlong noted that although Lu's actions did not have a direct impact on the fairness of the examination, as an invigilator, Lu violated the examination board's confidentiality rules for personal gain. This behavior reflects his weak awareness of the rule of law and thus warrants punishment. Su Wenlong's mention of weak awareness of the rule of law drew public attention, with some noting that this language style is quite severe and reminiscent of terminology used by mainland officials, sparking discussions about Hong Kong's rule of law traditions. News Report 11 According to reports from China Digital Times, a recent poll released by Tsinghua University's Center for Strategic and Security Studies shows that perceptions of the external world among Chinese people have worsened significantly over the past year. The report, titled 2024 International Security Perspectives of Chinese People, compares survey results from last year and this year. On a scale of 1 to 5, the data indicates a notable decline in perceptions of several countries. The perception score for the United States is 1.85, a decrease of 0.34 points. The score for Japan is 1.68, down 0.51 points. The European Union score is 2.61, down 0.25 points. South Korea is at 2.1, a decline of 0.5 points. India is at 2.01, a decrease of 0.32 points. ASEAN is at 2.75, down 0.22 points. Despite the lowest perception scores for the US and Japan, the data shows that the US is the country with the largest Chinese immigrant population, while Japan is the country with the most Chinese tourists. At the same time, although the overall perception of foreign countries has worsened, Chinese people's views of Russia remain largely unchanged, with last year's score at 3.67 only slightly dropping to 3.66 this year, indicating a generally positive attitude toward Russia. The survey also reveals that Chinese people maintain strong confidence in their own country. 90% of respondents believe that China's global influence has increased over the past five years, 59% think that the U.S. influence is declining, 67% believe that the U.S. global status will continue to decline in the next decade, and 89% believe that China's global position will continue to rise in the next decade, with 39% believing that China's status will rise rapidly. Regarding attitudes towards handling international disputes, 42% of respondents believe that China should rely on its own strength to resolve issues, 33% support actions through the United Nations, and 25% think that they should unite to support countries that back China. These data indicate a strong dependence on strength and international status within China, especially among older, less educated respondents who are more inclined to believe that those who fall behind will be beaten and more supportive of resolving issues through strength. Overall, this survey reflects the increasing influence of domestic propaganda over the past year, creating a growing gap between the public's perception of the world and international realities. News Report 12 On October 9, 
the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences announced that this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to three scientists, David Baker from the University of Washington, and Demis Hassabis and John Jumper from Google's DeepMind. They were awarded for cracking the code of protein structures. Baker received 500,000 Swedish kronor for completing a task that was considered nearly impossible, creating entirely new proteins. The other 500,000 kronor was divided between Hasabis and Jumper for their development of an AI model capable of predicting complex protein structures, solving a problem that remained unsolved for 50 years. According to data from the Nobel Prize website, from 1901 to 2023, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry has been awarded 115 times, with a total of 192 laureates. Among them, British scholar Frederick Sanger and American scholar Carol W. Greider have both won the prize twice. This awarding of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry highlights the importance and influence of artificial intelligence in scientific research, particularly in the field of protein structure prediction. News Report 13 According to a report from the Daily Economic News, on October 6, a Chinese netizen encountered a bribery attempt by a police officer while exiting from Kunming Changshui International Airport. The netizen recalled that there were several tables marked for different provinces in the security check area, and he was called to the table for Hunan. The officer inquired whether he had reported his travel plans for going abroad during the National Day holiday and stated that if he hadn't reported it, he needed to pay 100 yuan as a fee for calling the leader. Eventually, under pressure, the netizen handed over 100 yuan. Afterward, the netizen felt something was wrong and publicly disclosed the incident online, only to discover that other netizens had encountered similar situations. In response, the Public Security Bureau of Xiangxi Tujia and Miao Autonomous Prefecture in Hunan issued a statement on October 9, stating that the officer involved, surnamed Chen, has been suspended from handling cases and emphasized that this was his personal behavior. This incident has sparked widespread public attention, with many believing it reflects issues of law enforcement going out of control at the local level. Although the police claimed this was an isolated incident, many comments suggest that such situations reveal vulnerabilities and failures in the governance system.